Yo, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. It's now time for us to dig right into the headlines on Nigeria's newspapers this morning. And we've invited Jide Johnson to help us with that. Good morning, Mr. Johnson, and thanks for joining us. Good morning. Good morning to our viewers all over the world. It's a wonderful you, day. Indeed it is. Let's take a read through the newspapers this morning. Ah, lots of big stories. Let's begin with the Nation newspaper. Labor rejects government's bid to end 120 billion naira patrol subsidy. NNPC saying that burden is not sustainable. And NLC saying Nigerians shouldn't suffer government's inefficiency. Above here on the Nation newspaper, it says Lagos won't compromise vaccination protocol. Zulum says North and South power rotation is a covenant. Bandits kill soldier, 29 others in Kaduna and Niger State. $1.3 million cash found in panel members' house, tendered in court. Don't tar justice's reputation, Supreme Court warns. And Tinebu to chair Arewa lecture in Kaduna. Report says 2,539 lives lost. 3,000 displaced by farmers' herders' clashes in four states. Below the fold on the nation newspaper, bad eggs in police should go, says Bajabia Mila. Ex-minister dies at 76. Those are the stories on the nation this morning. All right, and now to the Daily Sun uh, newspapers. We don't use this a lot, but uh, let's share what we can find here. It says here, fuel to sell at 234 naira per litre. A subsidy hits 120 billion naira monthly. Federal government says it can no longer bear the burden, targets 2,000 CNG filling stations in six months. Nigeria, developing countries losing $1 trillion annually to illicit financial flows, and that's from Naiti. This one and also on the Daily Sun, Buhari seeks joint efforts to tackle rising threats to common existence. 30 Sokoto schoolgirls hospitalized over strange sickness. And COVID-19 UAE bows to pressure, lifts suspension of flights from Nigeria to Dubai. That's actually a good story. Why insecurity is worsening, and that's from the president, Muhammad Buhari. 2023 presidency, Igbo group charges PDP to respect zoning, says Southeast will reject candidate, not from zone. And the NDLEA is uh, in the news this morning saying 126 jailed for drug trafficking in Ondo, Kano, Plateau, and others. Okay, let's turn now to another newspaper. Um, let's look at this one here, the Daily Independent. Outrage as FG admits paying fuel subsidy after removal. Hmm. NNPC says it can't bear 120 billion naira monthly subsidy. Nigerians may pay above 200 naira per litre soon. A minister here is saying National Assembly to pass petroleum industry bill in April. Above the headline, 30 Sokoto schoolgirls hospitalized over uncertain sickness. COVID-19, UAE removes rapid antigen tests for Nigerian passengers and restricts inbound passengers to 200. Unlucky if you're the 200 and one passenger who wants to travel to the UAE. <laughs> Electoral more practice. Professor backs 36-month jail term. AFG tenders $1.3 million cash recovered from ex-Air Force chief as evidence. NNPC records 24.19 billion naira trading surplus in December. And Sheikh Gumi here is saying, why abducted Kajuna students can't be rescued? I really wonder why. CSOs reject ex-IGP's security officers as police service chief's head. And Lagos Assembly approves Son Wulu's request to purchase 355 vehicles. All right, and now on the Punch newspapers, uh, we can see here Lagos kicks nurses fault federal government as alleged vaccine sale uh, surfaces. Uh, I saw something yesterday, I think I shared it with uh, everyone. Uh, someone who claimed that she tried to get vaccinated here in Lagos and the vaccines were being 
um, sold, were being given to the highest beaters. People were driving, you know, closer in their SUVs and getting vaccinated in their cars and not having to wait in line and paying a little, you know, sum for some of those vaccines. Um, and, you know, remember we had spoken about this, you know, a couple of weeks ago and, you know, said that these are some of the things that you will expect in Nigeria. And it's left for the government to ensure that we, um, that these things don't, you know, um, you know, come up here and there. But let's see. Once again, Lagos kicks. Nurses fault federal government as alleged vaccine sale surfaces. Lagos demands proof as residents decry vaccine sale at centers. Federal government satisfied with progress of vaccination. And we also can see here 288 billion naira released for COVID-19 relief. 2.1 million jobs saved, says the federal government. Petrol price hike imminent. And NPC declares, uh, declares 120 billion naira subsidy unsustainable. And um, APAPA, Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, fumes as gridlock threatens 2,000 export cargoes. We can also see uh, here contributory pension assets surface, uh, suffered decline, lost 7 billion naira in January, says Pencom. Um, just a few more we can share here. Lagos, or rather, police hunt Lagos party organizer as man kills a friend over lover. APC panel will submit a report on presidential seat zoning, says uh, government, or governor rather. And then a professor jailed for three years for declaring Akpabio winner. PDP jubilates. Uh, I saw that story yesterday. Apparently, he um, had inflated figures here and there for um, Akpabu, and he has been found guilty. So I'm not sure if that, you know, if that um, um, election result will be overturned or not. Uh, we can also see, uh, finally, $1.3 million recovered from ex-Nigerian uh, Air Force chief tendered during trial. Those are the big ones on the Punch newspapers this morning. Uh, I think we can quickly yes. bring in Jide Johnson here. Good morning once again, sir. Good morning. Good morning to you. Well, um, I think we should start on the vaccine. Of, uh, I took the job on Monday. Call we discussed that is you last Friday when we yes. talked about what government needs to do. And we need to. I took the job on Monday. I went then to the center closest to my to my residence. I took the job. There was no drama concerning it. The protocol is very very simple. Um, Frontline workers, which include nurses, people in the medical profession, um, for, uh, foil attendant, teachers, journalists, uh, frontline workers. Then you have the the aged, which is uh, people 65 years and above, and others. That that's the protocol. That's the and I've asked friends ac across 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 the guard the discussion. I appeared on a on a sister nation on on, on Wednesday and I, and the the presenter also took ease on Tuesday. So the protocol, there's no doubt that we have challenges here and there because some will try to, to corrupt the system. Corruption is not peculiar to Nigeria. It's not peculiar to Nigeria. It's not in Nigeria. It's not even in Nigeria. World. Some will try to corrupt the system, but it's important that the state agencies come as quickly as possible to address, address um, the situation. Initially, there was an apathy. Now you see that there is a surge. Everybody wants to take the misconception that people have towards towards it um, is, is changing, and um, the turnout is increasing by the day in Lagos. And some people want to cut, want to cut corners, want to cut corners. What we just need to drum home is for the protocol to be maintained at all levels and across 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 uh, the state. I think. That is um, the protocol in Lagos is fantastic. Um, the vaccine, the vaccination is going on as 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 planned. So that's on on the on the vaccine and yes. if the health workers are. All right, uh, Jenny Johnson, can you hear us? We seem to be having uh, slight issues with your. Hello. Welcome back. Go ahead, please. Look, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Go ahead. Okay. So um, the next one is is. Is the attempt by federal government to act the and uh, the admittance of the federal government that they are subsidies? So they've been deceived. The large increase, nobody's going to pay subsidy again. And it's it's quite surprising that in a nation and in a democracy, 
Government will be paying 120 billion monthly subsidy. And nobody, nobody seems to know anything about 120 billion. Who is paying for what? For who? On what? Where does that 120 billion go to? And that's why some have advocated that there is the need for us to unbundle NNPC or to privatize NNPC. Just like what we used to have with NITEL in the past, what we used to have with NEPA, with government investing money in NEPA and NITEL, state monopolies in the past, without getting any result. Now, the power sector have been unbundled. The, tele the telecom sector have been unbundled. Now, NNPC seems to be a government on its own, that operates on its own. Because I don't know, the money for the subsidy, where does it come from? Because it's not in budgetary allocation. People should go to jail. People should go to jail. What is the National Assembly doing concerning this? Where do they get the 120 billion monthly subsidy from? Where? I don't understand. So they've been playing on our intelligence and they've been deceiving Nigeria. Only God um, will help us in this in this country. Like others have expressed outreach. Mine is more than more than more than outreach that government. We need quite all right that we'll get to this 234. And let's wait and see. The labor, labor is kicking against it. Let's hope that um, labor and other critical stakeholders will do will do the needful when it comes to this full well, eye. All right, this Mr. Johnson. Going to Mr. Johnson, on the yes. Nation newspaper, we saw a story here about the 2023 election. Zulum here is saying yeah. North South power rotation is a covenant. And remember that uh, Zulum's, you know, colleague, his Kano State counterpart, Abdullahi Gandaje, and the former military head of state, General Yakubo Gawan, had emphasized that zoning of, you know, the country's highest office will foster national unity. So we get back to the same conversation. Should we be talking about everybody getting a sense of belonging or should it be a matter of competence? Uh, when you talk to, if you look at another headline in, it, in another newspaper, um, said 2023 Eco Group charges PDP to respect zoning. Now, if you say zoning is a covenant, where it's an agreement, um, an arrangement between a interest group within the political parties, but it's not in the 1999 constitution as amended, it's not in the 1999 constitution, it's not in the constitution of both leading parties, both APC and PDP. However, there is this unwritten rule, like a convention, and like Zulum said, a covenant, that there should be rotation between North and South. Now, if there is rotation between North and South, where does it go to in the South? Is it the Southeast, South-South, or Southwest? This is another conversation that we are, we are having. As far as I am concerned, I think what should be concerned is the capacity I don't care where the president comes from. The president has twice gone to has twice gone to Casina in the last in the last in the last um, twenty one years. It has twice gone to Casina. What has happened to Casina State, for example? What was the situation of this in Casina? Has he improved the life of an average person in Casina? The presidency has come to Ogun State. You can't travel from from Lagos to Abekuta through Lagos Abekuta Expressway. The speaker had been to Ogun State, and the last the last speaker from Ogun State, Timothy Bankoli, just crossed over to APC. The president received him. I remember when he was speaker that he came to some quarter to talk about the bridge, the flyover in some quarter, and the road that it will be done. Has it been done? No. The the presidency has been to Bayesa. In what way has he an average Bayesa? We said he should go to the minority. I think we should take the conversation beyond rotation. We should take it beyond rotation. We should look at the cap. I don't care and I don't mind. For example, I wouldn't mind someone like Zulu to be the president of Nigeria. I wouldn't. I would rather because he has a track record of performance. That's why the challenges he's having in Bonu State. But we have people that are claiming to that are that are going for the presidency that have no record. So on the basis of zoning, if you have a credible and a capable candidate from another section of the country, you will not sacrifice that on the basis of zoning. As far as I'm concerned, zoning has not helped us. Rather, it has limited our worldview and our capacity to look at the capacity 
and the capability of the candidate. And we want to move forward. I think we need to jettison zoning. I am totally against the zoning zoning nonsense. I believe in meritocracy. That I might be wrong, but it's my own world view that it should be based on merit. So if you now talk about zoning, you see that South South, the conversation is not between the Southeast and Southwest. Or it should be us in the South. Now, if you look at the conversation in PDP, the the South East is strategically positioned better than every other section in this in the in, in the South. In the in the APC, the Southwest is strategically positioned better um, than any other section or or region in the South is in, in, in the South. So All right. let's um, let's see how it goes. But as far as I'm concerned, it's an arrangement with the political within the political parties. It's not the 1999 Constitution. And as Fela said, it's army arrangement. Well, it's a, it's a conversation that will continue. And of course, Nigerians will have to figure out if we want zoning or we want competence or we want someone who, um, you know, of course, will do a, a great job um, mm -hmm. as a Nigerian president. There's also a story of a professor um, who has um, been jailed for three years for falsifying results at the Acquire Bomb elections in 2019. Uh, it's, um, it's a professor, I'm trying to find his name now. Uh, Peter Ogba of the Department of Soil Science, University of Uyo, uh, who, of course, uh, manipulated and falsified election results in Orukanam and Etim Ekpo local government area in favor of the APC. Uh, do you, you know, think that a situation like that should call for a recount of the election results or maybe a, a callback of, you know, the person who was declared winner? The result was rejected by NEC. Don't forget that that particular result was rejected by, by INEC, and that's why there was a runoff for those two local government in the first, even when Akwabi had become a, a, a minister, had become a serving minister. There was a runoff, and Chris Ekwenyong, the former deputy governor of Akwabi State, won the election, won after even the runoff, because those two local governments were, were nullified in the first, in the first general, general. It's a welcome development, and I'm sure that professor has lost his professoral appointment, he has lost his appointment um, with University of um, Uyo. He has he has shimified his, his family. I think we should have this across across board. There was an incident that happened in Imo State. We have not had anything concerning it, where the electoral officer said he declared the result because the gun was placed on his head, and the person that was declared winner is still parading himself as. I as he said. We saw it live. We saw it live on TV. I think um, the judiciary should be courageous. I commend the the judge for I can because I can imagine the kind of pressure that would have been on this judge before he comes out with this particular judge. And I think that once we begin to do this, when we make examples of of of, of intellectuals, because we thought that if we use it was Jagas' experiment that if we use professors and we use BCs as returning officer, as returning officer, who we'll, with their level intellectual development and what they have attained in life won't see won't see what we have been witnessing concerning manipulation of result across board when it comes to tallying election election results because that's where the rigging actually take place we recall that of the bc i can't record i don't know i can't remember the name of the bc for a shoe state election the Oshu state election where the bc um took a phone call and suspended the proceeding before they had a runoff. I think this would be an example. It should happen in a quiet bomb state. It should happen across all the states in the Federation. And then when we begin to make examples and when we begin to shimify characters that we think should have integrity, I think we will have election integrity back in our country. Let right. the actual winner of the electoral process be the person that should be sworn in into office. That's when we have um, good performance because you'll be judged based on your record not on your ability or capacity to rig the election, which has always been the easiest route through which people assume political office in Nigeria. Okay, uh, um, another thing, I know you've spoken extensively about the Apapa gridlock. Um, and you always are very you know, upset when we have to talk about it, but it's back in the news again. Uh, Manufacturers Association of Nigeria is once again complaining about the gridlock and saying that about 2,000 cargoes um, may be um, uh, have been threatened here. Uh, it, it seems like a cancer you remember, in, in Nigeria. 
You remember two weeks ago or two weeks ago we spoke about this issue, yes. and the governor threatened, and I said, uh, "Do you own a truck? Are these people operating this business? Are they ghost?" I said, "They are the high and mighty in the society. They operate as the Lord and Master of the road. That what, let us wait and see whether the gridlock will end or not, because the beneficiary and the promoter of the current system that we have at Papa." Are, are untouchable. There are there are people in high, high places. There are people in high places. There are people that we just just a phone call. They get access to whoever is in authority to give instruction, and we operate an authoritarian society. And when someone in authority speaks, the process when you have an authoritarian society, the process is mortgage. The process is mortgage. So it is who knows who that get things done, not what must be done. And that's the situation we have in our papa. It's why can't that problem be solved? Well, I ask this question. I, you know, I, I, in I, the past, we used to, if you travel between Lagos and Expressway, between, um, we used to have trucks. Once you get to Mowe, before you get to Mountain of Fire, we used to have trucks on that road. We used to have trucks on that road. And the governor of Ogun State was decisive concerning that. And they move those trucks away. You can't find those trucks again. The only it's, it's, axis it's, where you find those trucks again is between um, Ogere, Ogere and Shakade, where you travel to Lagos about the expressway. That's when you see those trucks again. Jude Johnson. And we see the. Um, yeah. This I remember the vice president um, earlier in the first tenure had taken a helicopter trip, you know, um, um, above um, Apapa and made promises, uh, you know, about ending the traffic. Successive governments of Lagos State have done the same thing. These persons cannot be more powerful than the Nigerian government. Or is it possible that there's people in the Nigerian government, both at the state and federal level, that are benefiting from all of that? I told you, one, these are the promoters of those in government. These are the financiers of those in government. These are the people that contribute money for their campaign funds. And he who pays the piper dictates the tune. Time. Now, right. this in America, they call them the deep state. These are the deep states. These ones have deeper stake than the state. They are the state within the state. They are the untouchable. Because all you need to do, you have experienced them on the road. If you are driving, all you need to do is to see the impunity and the rascality of truck drivers. How they, struggle, even on the, how they struggle with you on the road if you are driving as if you are a fly. It tells you their mindset and their mentality. So as far as I'm concerned, the vice president can make whatever promises he wants to make. Successive government. I think the government that really tried to deal with this particular problem was Fashola's government. Yes. When Fashola said, you know what, let's have a time frame through which this truck can move in Lagos. And they gave them the night season. And I think if we can try to mitigate, if we can have a holistic solution, try to mitigate the process, give them a timeline with which they can move. And we begin a gradual process because it's become endemic. Like you said, it's a cancer. You don't deal with cancer. All right. Um... You are, we, what we should be looking at is it has been there for years. They've been there for years. So we should have a time frame for dealing with this particular problem. So once there's a time frame, I can assure you, and the, there's the will, the, the, the will, the political will, that is what is required to okay. do the needful to, to get this problem solved. Otherwise, we just be playing the service to it because people are making money. All right, Judy Johnson, I think this is where we would um, uh, end uh, the discussion this morning. Thank you so much uh, for speaking with us and for sharing your Friday morning with us. Uh, good morning once again. It's a pleasure to be with you. Have a wonderful Friday. You, you too, too, sir. All right. Good morning to you once again. Stay with us. So we have uh, Today in History coming next. I'm going back to the year 1997. I'm going back to very recent history to talk about one of the most remarkable names in the history of politics. Do stay with us. <laughs>